Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Today we're having a look at Quillbot and we're looking at Grammarly and these two titans are going to go head to head and we're going to go ahead, look at all their features, have a look at all their disadvantages and see which one is going to be a better choice for you. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to discuss is the usability here, right? So jumping into Quillbot firstly, on the left hand side, there are a bunch of tools, okay? From citation generator to translator to a summarizer, there's an AI detector, there's a plagiarism checker, there is a grammar checker and there's a paraphraser tool. Okay, so having a look at what features these two have, Quillbot have quite a bit of features. You can see that there is quite a lot. Now, not everything is available for the free package. However, most of these items are actually available for the free package. If I want to just go ahead and compare it to Grammarly, Grammarly has sort of dumbed it down and it is more of a grammar and spelling tool. Of course, um, we have the options for plagiarism over here. We've got a plagiarism checker and um, we have got a generative AI feature. However, if you have a look um, at its features, it really just has the spelling and the grammar checker. So if I'm going to go ahead and put a document in here, you can see it'll give me a report. So what it'll report me on is um, correctness. So how correct this has been written clarity how clear the message is we're also looking at engagement and then we're looking at um, its delivery does it reach the person the audience that is reading and then you can see over here it gives you an overall performance score and it represents the quality of the document there's also a word count character count sentence count an average reading time speaking time and then it also gives you a readability and a vocabulary report as you can see over here so it's given you a lot of information about what it is that you are actually writing okay if you're going to go ahead now and have a look at um, the quill bot you can do pretty much the same and again i'm just going to take this over here what i've done is i've copied this we're going to paste it in over here and you can see again, it's going to give you a writing score and it's going to give you some recommendations. If you tap on the view details, it does give you a little bit more detail, but it doesn't give you that much more. OK, it gives you your word counts and sentence counts, but it doesn't really give you a whole lot more. So, yes, they have more tools. However, um, Grammarly is more specific to what they are actually aiming at over here. One of the other things that I do want to um, sort of speak about here is that the translator app within Quillbot is um, offered in 45 languages. You can see over here, that's quite a bit. So if you go ahead and you paste something in over here, it's going to first of all detect this language. And if it's inaccurate, uh, you can obviously just change it. We're going to go ahead and say translate. And again, you can see that this has been translated. Let's change the language, of course. Um, let's go into Italian. And this has now changed the language. And I did some research and it has a very, very high accuracy rate. So even if you don't understand this language, you are still able to use this. OK, so it is pretty accurate. Grammarly, unfortunately, at this stage, if you want to change your language, the only language options you have is to change um, your language preference in terms of what type of English you have it in. So that's from American, British, Canadian, Australian and Indian English. So it's still only in one language. They don't um, specialize in any other languages. So you cannot use it as a translation tool. One of the other things is if you go and have a look, Coolbot as well as Grammarly do have uh, Chrome extensions. Chrome extensions are fantastic. You can use them anywhere on your Chrome browser. You can probably get one for your Microsoft Edge browser. And um, I think that's fantastic. The upper hand, though, is that the Quillbot really only allows the, the Quillbot extension and really only allows for you to use within your Chrome browser. And then also it allows you to use within your Microsoft product. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. It also offers like a small sidebar so you can really work straight from here. It's great and you can integrate it with your Microsoft products. However, 
if you have a look at Grammarly, Grammarly really is just, uh, you can um, integrate Grammarly into anything. You can integrate it into applications on your device. If you are on uh, the web and you are texting, uh, if you're typing, and you'll have that assistant right there with you. So Grammarly really is a little bit of a better extension. Um, and then also it does have a desktop app and it also does have a mobile app. So you can go ahead, you can sync all of these accounts as well. So whatever you're doing on your mobile, whatever you're doing on your desktop, you can do this all together. Now, the last thing I wanna just discuss quickly is the pricing. Now, this of course is very important. Quillbot does offer, as I said, quite a few apps. You can see over here, they've got a lot of stuff. And to be very honest, the amount of product that they're giving you for $4.17, all right, that's their premium. It's really not a lot to be paying for all of the features that they're offering. Let's compare it to Grammarly, and Grammarly currently has their um, lowest price point here at $12. Now, I know it's more of a specialized tool, and if that's what you're looking for, then Grammarly is the one for you. In actual fact, I personally use Grammarly on all my devices with everything I do. So if I make like a little bit of a slip up or whatever uh, while I'm typing, while I'm writing, then Grammarly corrects me. It also helps me sentence structure. So it helps me to just sort of make my sentence more readable. But for $12, that's something that you want. That's a bit of a higher price point. Um, in my opinion, Quillbot really has come in at a good price and it's really offering a lot of services. What do you think, folks? Let us know in the comment section down below. Do you currently use Quillbot? Do you currently use Grammarly? Would you like to swap over? What do you use it for? And uh, we'll catch you in another awesome video. Cheers for now, folks.